Hey, Gareth, I'm, I'm ready to go when you are. All right, everybody, we're ready to start. Thank you for coming. This is the quarterly or yearly Design Media Arts Art Science co-sponsored event. And I'm super pleased to introduce Ina Conradi and Mark Chavez today. They are actually our artists in residence at the Art Science Center and have been very active in coming along to a lot of our activities a couple of weeks ago. We had uh, a workshop with some students, and in general, it's been wonderful to have their presence. They're here to, uh, during a sabbatical from the Nanyang Technological University, where they both teach, and Ina is going back there to teach soon. Um, during this time here, they worked on some new pieces and really just kind of doing the sabbatical, what a sabbatical should be, really to kind of thinking through the projects that they are about to embark on. As they arrive, very soon after, they received a major award in Hollywood, I should say, that's a, a Lumiere Award for a magnificent piece which you will see tonight, the chrysalis. When I saw that piece, it really caught my breath. I couldn't believe it. First of all, because I personally have had, as some of you know, an obsession with butterflies and chrysalises and the metamorphosis. But the way they connected it to Buddhism and to this just uh, meaning of life was just so beautiful. I'm not surprised at all that they received this award. A little bit because it's Hollywood, but also it gives me hope for Hollywood to see that. Um, yes, so they're here to present some of their work and also what they're trying to work on now, the media art nexus uh, with the Nanyang Technological University. Uh, we're, as a center, we're very interested in creating these kind of connections. So that's one of the things we've been talking about while they were here. Uh, but they will also show you some of the earlier work. So what's really nice about today's talk is that it's not so much talk as much as show, showing the work that they've been doing. And uh, I'll just introduce them a little bit because they're very modest people. Uh, and, and I doubt that they would kind of um, talk about themselves too much. So first of all, I should say, a reminder to myself, uh, both are UCLA alumni. In fact, Ina is an alumni of the old design department before it became Design Media Arts, although she was hanging out in sculpture and art most of the time, I hear. Uh, and Mark is an alumni of UCLA Animation Department, so in a way it's a full circle for them, which is a very beautiful thing. Uh, so Ina, just very quickly, uh, was showing her work all over the place. I'm kind of losing the sense here of all the stuff she's been doing. Um, and I could go on and on with the list. Um, she was showing at let's see, the New Media Festival, the, the, she won numerous awards. Uh, she showed all over the world, Brazil, Singapore, uh, most recently also at Ars Electronica, uh, in California, all over. Actually, I would take too much time to be reading it. And then Mark um, is an animator and artist who also was showing in similar, well, together. Actually, they've been working together for 20 years, I should have mentioned. Um, so he, a lot of the works that he's been doing has been in also commercial fields. So he worked with DreamWorks, uh, Rhythm and Hue Studio here in LA. Um, he teaches, again, they're both Renaissance people, and that's why we love them. So give them a warm hello and a welcome. Thank you so much, Vesna. Thank you, uh, uh, Art Science Center, Vesna, for this invitation and for wonderful artists in resident experience. We are so impressed with the number of events and talks and with your amazing team. Uh, so. Uh, today I will be talking um, about 
uh, briefly about some past works, then we will highlight some works in, done in Singapore, and then uh, I will give up, I will pass the microphone to Mark to continue. I start 30 years of, with the works some 30 years ago that I did at UCLA as a, my Master of Fine Arts. The reason why I'm showing these works, I want you to understand that you will evolve as artists and you will, uh, in your future, do various works. So th these are uh, sculptural pieces. They, they were large and immersive walk through environments. Uh, the images was usually inspired after Orthodox monasteries and um, they were exhibited here at Dixon Art Center. Uh, I continued uh, with the same type of work on the invitation of Japanese government where I did, uh, I uh, continues, uh, continued under Japan Foundation grant uh, to continue this uh, textile uh, research. And uh, Mark joined me in Tokyo. So he was in Tokyo, I was in Kyoto, we were commuting. And then I'm jumping to current times. This is the time when we joined uh, um, NTU, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Uh, they were setting up a new school uh, of art, design, and media, and then invited Mark first to set up the animation, and then I joined. Uh, Singapore, at that time, Art in Singapore was perceived, like so many goods, as a commodity. And the assumption was that, like so many other goods, uh, from water to oil to consumer products, it can be generated, uh, it can generate wealth uh, merely by being just uh, channeled through the harbor city, because Singapore is one of the largest cities. So they, they wanted, Singapore wanted to change that. So they started the Renaissance City Plan, uh, it was launched in 2000, and we just arrived at that time. So I was wondering, what can I do in a digital media school in the new media arts? I'm such a traditional fiber artist. So I started painting using Maya. Mark was uh, bringing all these uh, softwares from DreamWorks, and so I learned basic Maya, basic enough to paint in the 3D space. So uh, with the paintings completed, I started putting them uh, into virtual environments and proposing the larger public uh, uh, installations. Uh, one of the first one that was uh, actually installed was in, uh, uh, called Internal External, and it was installation in Post Museum in Singapore. Uh, at that time, it was rev revolutionary for me because as you might not know, the batch renders didn't exist in 2008, at least not in, in my, in my uh, area. So we were uh, coming up with the scripts and trying to render to that scale. So this, this, this was a walkthrough environment. Uh, it was inspired of the natural systems and um, all the brushes were using algorithms and they were mapped. So from there, um, again, tightly working with Mark, we were discussing, well, all these things, you know, when you build these big structures and big uh, environments, how do you ship them? How do you move them around? How do you take them? And it costs. So I start more and more being fascinated with the stereoscopy and 3D animation because I was thinking, oh my gosh, these paintings can just actually be immersed in, in an actual physical space, get this Im illusion. So uh, Mark encouraged me to start writing uh, research funding grants and I proposed 20 of them and I uh, was lucky to receive seven so I could engage people. And that was the whole point of the research environment in Singapore is that you have to engage people, you have to engage students, you have to create research teams and you have to s start sharing this knowledge. So uh, um, the, the pieces, were so welcomed, uh, in particular in Ars Electronica, where uh, by coincidence they had, uh, not by coincidence, but they had the most beautiful space that I uh, saw when I was writing the proposal. And I remember putting the picture of the deep space. It's called deep space. It's 16 by nine meter large platform. At that time it was 2K. Nowadays it's 8K, it's huge. So, so I sent the works there and they, they welcomed it so well and uh, it was a dream come true for an artist who paints to see the artworks at this large scale. We also start moving more, we, I'm saying we as it's my research team, we start planning 
uh, for the uh, different setups as well. So I, I'm uh, again talking more about the setups and spaces, but this piece was called uh, La Phenomena Atmospherique. It was inspired by weather phenomena by Olafur Eliasson and his uh, experiment, experiments in uh, uh, combining uh, perceptual things and uh, physical objects and in, in the gallery in space. And also light and, and uh, light movement, Californian light movement, Irving, and all these uh, great artists that were using very abstract language to, to create uh, paintings. So the, the works were very abstract at that time. And also I start looking, okay, so yes, we can have a cinema projection, but also we can have these experimental platforms. So uh, all of my films, when they're completed, I really like to pre-visualize or, or plan the exhibition. So uh, we would approach the gallery spaces and they would then uh, give us their space and we would render and uh, give them as a proposal what we can do. In this particular case, you saw the big sun and I, I wanted to make it out of the paper or some kind of rapid prototyping. Again, this is 2010 where we just start, uh, with rapid prototyping just starting. But of course, these pieces are, would end up being very expensive. Uh, just at the time when I was speak of this abstraction, I noticed that my films, unless I put them into gallery, they, they don't have any visibility. So I started looking, how can I combine a realistic imagery and, and very surre surreal plot? And just about that time, my dad passed away. And just about that time, I, I received a research funding to do something else. And I, in the com in, to commemorate my dad, I wanted to create um, abstract film with the, with the representational stuff, but with this very surreal plot. So I went into history of my dad, and I find out a lot of interesting things in, about my grandfather, who was also in the First World War. My dad was in the Second World War. Uh, my all my grandmothers were one, my grandfather was in Dachau, my grandmother was in Buchenwald. So my dad was just this big warrior, but it was very strange. Here I was in Singapore, and I'm thinking about World War II, totally out of the context of any planned stuff. And I just said, I have to create a war film. So I didn't know where to start. War film is like such a big concept. So I started looking into, uh, into some uh, films like Wim Wenders, and I got this idea that it's going to be a, about the resurrection, about people that never die. They, they go into paradise. So I googled the word paradise, and Elysian Fields came up. And so um, I will just show you a short clip. about to talk about this film will take me probably whole hour but the film was done with two of my students that I trained since year one and I was so lucky that they joined me once they graduated we hid in my office because at that time we couldn't really do research in the office but we transformed my office in a studio and we were just like that working so I was they were behind me sometimes they would sleep when I would come but uh, I told them we will send this film. First award was given in LA, and then we just start sending it and end up on the Oscar list. So we were in competition at one point. And it was very surreal to be in a Chinese theater uh, in LA with all the Chinese symbols and watching the film that's dedicated to my father. It's about the war. So it was very, very surreal. Uh, so from 
LA and Hollywood, we go to Myanmar. And someone asked me, can you, can you send us a clip from your film? We have the, uh, uh, this part when the, the soldier dies and he ends up in this paradise field with a lot of poppy seeds and flowers. And so it was projected there for the Asian Olympic Games. Again, this film, um, sorry, uh, I wanted to show it in a, in a gallery. Uh, but this never materialized, maybe one day. So we wanted to, we were proposing to do a, a big laser shoot, the build paper planes or find the scavenge some planes and create this walkthrough environment where one would walk through the film and create a totally different narrative from, from uh, you know, uh, from the actually lin very linear story line. So we managed to do something similar. You see on the left, uh, Joshua and Davier, uh, they are very successful now. They have their company, and we are still working together. So <laughs> I'm still <laughs> welcome, and uh, so that's super cool. So we created the environment with uh, with the cloth, and people were just walking through. And uh, Chrysalis was the film that just recently got the award. <laughs> the story was about a butterfly that is struggling to evolve uh, from a chrysalis and uh, it's an old fable and uh, on board of this film Mark was tightly involved and we were working really tightly with again Crave FX. Current, my former students that are now having this nice company and we worked really closely together but it stretched over two years because it's just, you know, when you have a, your company, you can devote. And that was a bit uh, pain for me, but I threw myself into teaching. So Supernatural is actually, actually a, a title of a works that I did, a series of works that I did with my students. I had, I'm teaching a pattern art design class and architecture, and I like to see everything we do in space. So we, always come with the theme. Uh, we were co coming with the theme of uh, classics of mountains and seas, da nature and Dar Darwin. So uh, the, we accumulated a lot of works. So I was wondering, oh my gosh, what can I do with all these works, you know, with all these banners? So I kind of, I am well known as a, as a very kind of gorilla aggressive person when it comes to my students. I have no, so we, we took all these banners that they did, we printed them, and in the corner, in a striped dress, you see uh, Miss Faith, she is the director of an NTU museum, and she wanted to see these banners in public, and so we put them right across the, uh, the main administrative building in the core of NTU, United College University. But what we didn't know, peace is permanently. So uh, Mark and I, I mean, at that time, uh, Nanyang Technology University didn't have a physical building, but they proposed this art trail on campus that one would walk through the campus and find these different artworks. So we proposed a uh, very bold project, which is actually installed. So this is not the mock-up anymore. This is, this is installed 15 by two meter large LED media wall. Uh, and it was, uh, someone in Ars Electronica told me, you know, this is really one of a kind in the world. And, and I used to quote this uh, woman from Deep Space because uh, we only show art. We don't show any commercial, we don't show any promotional stuff, any bad media stuff, we only show art. So uh, NTU, United Country University has uh, over 40,000 people living there, including students and, and faculty. And so it's a great uh, visibility for works that would otherwise end up in a computer and won't be, won't be visible. So we had about over, oh, by now, probably 400 works exhibited. 
and integrated. So Mark uh, did a lot of help with integrating and also creating content. So we also used this opportunity to create a lot of new stuff and try new things, which was very unusual. So Supernatural, so now living on that board, and the works range from very abstract painterly stuff to uh, you know, animated stuff. This is the actually real-time animation that is tracking. Uh, it's called Macrosco Macrocosmic Flux by Kapila Naidu. It uses the Singapore Land Transport Authority data, and they are and uh, uh, as the as the buses in Singapore become more you know busy at night and passenger flow, the the board is more lively. So. Uh, again, phenomenal Ars Electronica said, sure, I bring the stuff over. So we, Mark did an amazing job in integrating all these works into 8K uh, projection for the, for the specs of Ars Electronica. So that worked really beautifully. And uh, also we showed some of our own work. Um, we were honored to be invited, uh, the, the Singapore government, Singapore Tourism Board invited us to be part of this beautiful exhibition in Japan and Tokyo with 13 international artists from uh, Japan and Singapore. And that, that was a great, great validation for us that we are doing something good. If Singapore government you know, wants us to show what we are doing, uh, it means it's, so your, uh, then from there on, we were like, okay, so how, how can we prove that this is very good stuff, that it, is, um, it, can, can, uh, go, it can travel places? So we proposed a joint exhibition with, with the Queens, uh, Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane and for the occasion of Web 3D Art Gallery on off. And uh, I was so pleased that Vesna accepted invitation. And this is uh, displayed in one of the biggest uh, media platforms in the world. It's called the Cube at Kut. And uh, um, the same setup was then uh, planned to be exhibited in Singapore. And I just love this image of Noise Aquarium by Vesna and uh, Alfred Wendel and Marina Foschel from the, um, Vienna, uh, and they use it as for the poster. And uh, the, we had, we had, uh, sorry, we had a nice symposium in Singapore. What was nice about this, it was the first time that we gathered and find the excuse to drink wine and network and talk and we had people from technology University of Technology Moscow, uh, South Wales from Kent. Uh, we had uh, Marpi from San Francisco who is doing really well now. This is one of his work. We had amazing Thorsten Bauer who presented from the field in Germany and uh, we had Professor Alfred Bender for a lab, uh, visual science visualization lab in Andevente, Victoria, said hello and gave beautiful presentation. This is the noise aquarium playing, and we also hijacked another big screen that was really close to ours, and we were able to display both contents simultaneously on both, both screens. So that went really, really well. We were really pleased with this event. Um, so what are the future plans? Uh, based on that beautiful symposium that we did around art and science, we were approached by Elfie Philharmonie and Thorsten Bauer, who is uh, actually founder of Urban Screens, invited us to uh, collaborate. So this time students in NTU and students in Beta K in Germany. So this is, they just sent me the picture of them on the roof of Elfie. And I am so excited. I'm going to see their works next week. <laughs> I'm traveling over there. I'm going to see them. And imagine it was meant to be. This is us the presenting to the class. They had a lot of questions. And this is my student who happened to be traveling from New York back to, he was an exchange in New York, traveling back to Singapore. And he, uh, he was like received like a royalty. They filmed him. and. He presented about the board. And then upcoming Lubenkent facade in Kent, 
they are testing. We already have everything in, in set. And then school from Lausanne, from Switzerland. And that's about it. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I will just uh, give uh, uh, to Mark. Thank you, Ina. That was great. Okay, so. Yeah, I want to thank uh, Victoria also for uh, inviting us to be uh, 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 artists in residence and uh, to participating with her in her show coming up and all the great uh, things she's uh, introduced us to here in LA. It's been a really nice uh, uh, couple of months, few months, and you know we have a few more months to go. So it's a uh, you know it's gonna, beginning of a long relationship. I'm looking forward to to uh, uh, continuing. So I'm I'm going to talk about uh, you know since Ina gave you a good overview of, of, of her work I'm going to focus in on on this project that I've been working with uh, at NTU and it kind of comes out of research uh, I was doing uh, 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 there as well in uh, various research uh, capacities but first I'll cover myself a little bit back when I was uh, a student in uh, uh, here at UCLA. Uh, I was doing these laser shows uh, at the place called Laser Media, as back in the early '80s. And you know, I was really lucky. Uh, I got a uh, part to take part in this large projection on the side of a mountain in Georgia. That's a uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia. It's in, in, it stands in infamy, uh, infamy, infamy, as uh, the place where uh, the uh, Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan, you know, originated. They, you know, I said, "Hey, I want to come over to the uh, opening." I said, no, don't come. Don't come. <laughs> Why not? But, you know, it's now that I, you know, understand. It's so it's so uh, shaded with. Uh, 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 Polit politics that I can understand why they, they were uh, rest, less than reluctant to see the artist who made this come over there. But anyway, uh, it, it was a, a, an interesting project to, to do, you know, trying to do the, you know, glory of the South, you know, as a, as a Latino, a Chicano, or Mexican. But anyway, and, and there on next to it, you see another, uh, that's my MFA project, which was a, a, a film I made. Uh, uh, about the uh, uh, Mexican gods Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl, they're kind of Teotihuacanos, kind of a god. Uh, and on, on the federal building, in the upper image, you can see a picture. That's a rendition of Zipitotec, which is a really, you know, notorious Aztec god. But it's there on the federal building. If you know, look up Zipitotec, he's the flayed god, and it's very, very violent, you know, war uh, uh, kind of scenario that that he played with in the Mexican cosmology. But uh, you know, in doing that, I, I was uh, uh, learning all about them and reading about, them, and it, it has uh, driven me towards my current uh, research. But here's a bunch of films I worked on when I was in production, and you know, I'm an expert in 3D modeling. I, I do, I'm ZBrush and Maya are, are really, I've been working with Maya since it first came out. It, you know, I think we were like uh, uh, consulting with them. Uh, Symbolics was a, a computer system that was predates, uh, yeah, that I was also uh, closely involved with. Clone Streeting, okay. Okay, and, and then uh, about 2000, I started doing these uh, uh, talking characters, they're chatbots. And so I started doing these little, uh, uh, I, uh, a friend of mine developed this software that would allow you to do almost like uh, VRML, uh, uh, but it wasn't really VRML, they had their own thing, so you could put texture maps on it, and then you could put visemes on the, on the speech, and you could make it talk. And so I used the, this thing called AIML, which is uh, 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 Richard Wallace's Alice. Uh, it's a chatbot, uh, it was a leading chatbot back in the, in the early, uh, you know, turn of the century, <laughs> but uh, it's still being used now. And so now these things are really hot. But, but uh, this is about 2002. I had this bot up, and people would go in and confess the most amazing things to to it. It was it was like you know their their brother or sister. They would say the most you know personal things. Like here's a list of what this one trucker would would say. Everything from, you know, the, he confesses how he shot his uncle in the head. You know, <laughs> just very bizarre things uh, with a BB gun, though, not a real gun. So, in, 
And but the problem with that it was a little bit sexual. You know, the character was very. You know, so when I went into academia, they were like, "What? What is this? It's so sexualized." And so I kind of started pulling away from that because I wasn't trying to. You know, I have a daughter, and I don't want to. You know, create porn. So uh, I decided that I'd look into a different way of doing it. And you know, and and the fact that I could move geometry around really fascinated me. The abstraction of it. And so uh, I started uh, looking into that. But at the same time, I was also looking, you know, still interested in my Mexican heritage. And so I found out that, that you know, they, they used to have this sh uh, shoe stone or a scrying mirror. It was an a ancient tradition among Mesoamerican, many Mesoamerican cultures uh, where they would use uh, a practice of div divination using the surface of a bowl of water or, uh, or uh, you know, a mirror, like uh, this polished uh, obsidian mirror. They would stare at it, of course, maybe using some uh, psychotropic, uh, uh, you know, propellants uh, to, you know, for, for their mind. But uh, they, they would, uh, uh, you know, vision these things. Wow, that is really interesting that they, there was a culture that would actually, where that was actually a tradition, you know, my culture. And so I started looking more and more at, at it, and then uh, uh, I found out that this one mirror was stolen or was uh, plundered by uh, the, the Cortez, and, and it ended up in the hands of this alchemist, uh, John D, and his assistant. And they used to communicate, use it to communicate with Iconian or Enochian entities, and, and, to, and they wrote this whole language in this book. And you know, they were claiming that it was Enochian magic, and it's based on the evocation of communicating with spirits. You know, this they think that they thought they were right. You know, talking to angels, and and so you know, this thing is very cross-cultural. The fact that people, you know, get pretty spaced out. And so, what what is that phenomena? It's 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 actually there's a phenomena called pareidolia, which is it, it's where people uh, the psychological phenomenon in which the mind responds to a stimulus, usually an image or a sound, by perceiving a familiar pattern where none exists. So you kind of make these things up, you know, like when you see something over there, you hear something, oh, my, it's a ghost, or what is that? Somebody's creeping around my house. You know, uh, uh, it can be, you know, I, I, I sometimes like to stare at, you know, concrete, and you just kind of imagine, oh, there's a guy, or there's a, you know, you just kind of, you let your mind kind of, uh, you know, you look at the moon, and you see a face, or, or different kinds of things uh, like this, for instance. It's just two dots in a you know, circle and a line, but you see a smiley face. You know, those kinds of things. Or, or you know, when these guys uh, uh, thought they saw uh, a, um, a, a face on, on, on Mars, you know? And so it's very common. Or this one where they think they see a walking man over here on the side. So it's a very common thing. So how does this apply to art making? Uh, you know, artists have thought about abstraction, and the, you know, Kandinsky had this exhibition at the Tate Modern that we happened to be at, uh, and uh, uh, in 2006, and uh, it shows you know how he actually evolved uh, very representational things into abstraction, and then turned them into patterns, and tried to use them as a base language. You can you can see this also in the. Demoiselles de Avignon by Pablo Picasso. Uh, you know, how he's using, I mean, those are not women, but they, you know, definitely are something, and they make you feel something. You, they, there's, there's a certain uh, a repulsion and attraction. So that's really interesting to me, trying to, trying to uh, create a meter for how these actually uh, will, will uh, and, and being in a technological university, too, you have to kind of prove these things. You know, you have to write, you know, this uh, approves, this does this, this does that, and therefore I can do this and make that. And uh, it's kind of the hypothesis, you know, you have to have a, a, a problem and then uh, you try to find solutions for it and then you document it. And, you know, there's, there's you know, Mark Rothko's work, he, he thought these were field paintings would make people feel things, you know, and, you know, they do actually. You sit in front of them, and, you, and, and same same thing with Oliver uh, Eliasson. This is not a waterfall, but it's you know underneath the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. It looks magical, you know. So those kind of things are very fascinating. So uh, in the meantime, I, I took the uh, the those those uh, the idea of the talking fi the characters, and I transformed uh, that into a the idea where we could rather than talking to a character, you would talk to 
you would walk up to this little panel and talk to this abstract painting. So you could ask it questions and it would go, you know, and so this is a proposal. I thought, oh, I really got to do this. Uh, one of my students, we have this, uh, 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 you know, we get these adva advanced students over there and they'll do anything for you. So she was very nice to draw that up. And she actually did uh, a prototype for me that uh, well, was pretty cool. Uh, but, and so trying to put these uh, uh, iconic uh, uh, groupings under something that actually makes sense. Uh, I started looking at uh, this circumplex model effect. I found this thing, and a lot of people were talking about emotive imagery at the time, about, you know, well, I mean, it's been going on for quite some time, but, but about 10 years ago, I started this. Uh, so I, I found this, and, uh, you know, you, as an artist, I can make an image that I think makes people uh, happy, or a happy image, but I had to measure it, you know? And uh, uh, I had to make an image that would actually make people happy. So there's a lot, a lot of examples of this, these kinds of circumplex models of effect, how, how people have visualized it. And so we started, Ina and I started on this emotion study project. And we started, we, we created all, all these emotions, came, it kind of came out of a, of a project one of my professors gave me and when I was in undergraduate school. He said, make five different image photographs that make you feel these different ways. You know, one that makes you happy, sad. So we, I made this little series of, of them and, you know, showed it to them. And they said, oh, yeah, it really does that. And so I, we did that with, with our students. We said, okay, make happy images, sad images, make different kinds of images. Uh, so this is uh, something, you know, we found a correlation. And, and we put this online for a while, and people could go in. It was about a 45-minute test. You could go and test these images and say how it makes you feel. I had these little bars. We had statistical analysis on it. I had a, a collaborator from uh, a school of communications doing all this. She had some uh, students uh, working on it. And we actually found that there are, are cl uh, correlations between a few, in particular, happiness, fear, uh, some of the more basic uh, uh, feelings. And then Ina made this great little film. So that's online, that, that film, if you want to go uh, uh, check it out. So, uh, it, my, but my stuff has been a little bit more character based, and so I, I, I tried to do a similar kind of feeling with, uh, with this guy. I made this installation where, uh, you know, depending on the number of people standing in front of it, the character would feel uncomfortable and he'd start walking around, getting, if there were a lot of people, he'd get. And he'd be looking out, uh, and, and then uh, and then if there's nobody there, he'd kind of become relaxed and happy. And then the walls would get wider and cleaner. Actually, we had a version where we had more cute uh, uh, affectation in the uh, design. And this one uh, is actually from a short film I made, about a 19-minute film. So I did it in three styles. I did it in uh, this cute style, and then a middle style, which isn't pictured here, and then kind of a, 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 a pleasant style. Uh, and uh, so you can see some of the, the design work we did. I had a, a group of about 20 students helping me 
I was able, I got big funding for this about two points, two million, about two million dollars. I was really fortunate in research funding. I was getting just all kinds of money because, you know, I you understand the problems are you, you have to write your proposal as research and then the projects under it are just individual projects. But if you have an over, well, uh, overlapping research concept, then they'll fund you over in Singapore. It's, I mean, they don't like to fund projects. They like to fund research. So if you have a, an, an idea like that, then they uh, tend to fund it a little bit better. So you can see the chart over there on the far uh, right. That is the actual chart we used to uh, make the changes. So I, you know, I, I probably could have uh, made the characters uh, in certain shots a little bit cuter, and in retrospect, and you know, it could have, should have. But I, I, you know, it got a lot of awards, and it did pretty well. I, I was happy with with the outcome of it. It's an action action film, action sci-fi Hong Kong kind of thing. So, but uh, if you want to see it, it's out there under Vengeance, vengeance under, under my. It got a lot of awards. And I'm really happy. And then in the meantime, I've been doing, you know, afterwards I did uh, 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 a lot of, you know, a little bit, because the, the, the problem with that movie was that it was it was it had a grim aspect to the uh, design. And so I decided, okay, animation, everybody thinks it's cute, so I just jumped into how much of cute stuff. And so I did that little short film that's playing up there. It's got music, but I'm not playing it. Uh, a little Barty and the Pirate, and uh, I made an avatar. I wanted to use the, the uh, uh, a chatbot avatar, and so the guy in the lower, uh, the pirate, you could talk to him. You could talk to all the characters, but the problem was the, the char you know, people have to download specific software and their packages, and you know, putting it out on the uh, on the uh, open uh, web just didn't didn't seem to it didn't seem to grab people, and uh, you know, that's a, a big problem. Is trying making things viral, making th uh, things consumable, but I, I think now nowadays uh, people are telling me that. Uh, uh, chatbot avatars are quite popular, you know, and a lot of people are looking for it, but it takes a big dive to go into it. So uh, now I'll talk a little bit about uh, Media Art Nexus. Uh, so uh, I'm really uh, fortunate uh, to, to have uh, that platform. I, I'm able to just make any any kind of animation I want, so nobody's telling me what to do or, or, or anything. So this one is a uh, called Sphere's Vision. It's got an interactive component. It's just little little uh, triggers that make things change and switch, and it's got a lot of action. So you can imagine uh, 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 walking by this. It's 15 meters, maybe here to the wall, and all these crazy things are going on. But you can't. The, the, there are certain rules. You can't move too much, otherwise it may do big global moves. Otherwise, people get sick. So you have to kind of keep it restrained. But you can do pretty pretty bright and pretty pretty uh, uh, loud things. Uh, that one w had a, a cameras uh, doing little triggers. This one uh, takes the uh, uh, camera data and maps it onto a reflection map and, and uh, you know, kind of changes the colors. It's a very subtle stuff, but, but uh, people kind of, you know, when they walk by and it's working uh, properly, they, they kind of notice it. There's some kind of, you know, inclusion into, into this uh, virtual world that we've Made and this one uh, uh, we showed qu around quite a bit. Uh, it's based on uh, this uh, pin screen animation uh, developed uh, by uh, Alexiev and his uh, Andrei Alexiev and his wife uh, uh, Claire Parker back in the 30s. Uh, so a lot of people uh, do that now. They actually push, you know, make these little films as exercises. But this one just uses a uh, uh, alpha map. And uh, pushes things around, and, uh, uh, and then uh, I have this other one. Uh, it's called I Wish, which uh, pulls tweets, and uh, uh, it's got all kinds. Of, you get all kinds of. You know, what's interesting about this is that uh, you get the really mundane uh, tweets, and then you get really profound and kind of you know prof uh, stuff. So people are wishing for all kinds of things, as you can imagine. Uh, and this is the network on uh, Touch Designer that I use for that. It's 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 pretty fun stuff. This guy wants to download food on the internet, so it's it's it's, not, it's kind of funny, but then it's sad too. It's it's really interesting, and that's what's really nice about it. It's a, it has a pop culture uh, uh, aspect to the board, 
So you can put very pop things, but then you know you can you can actually show other things that are a little bit more uh, moody. Uh, here's some of the work uh, we showed at Ars Electronica. This is a big 8K. It was a challenge. You know, they said, "Oh, you have to do it in 8K." I thought, 8K. How am I going to possibly do that on my personal computer? <laughs> but it was not that difficult, you know. It was uh, very fortunate. We're in a time now you can do that stuff on a home computer, a nice home computer. This is the rose uh, continuing with that. This is during the symposium. Uh, and it was mentioning mine as well as a number of other films are shown there. It's a very normal location. So it just gives a little bit of, you know, beauty to somebody's life when they're walking by and, you know, getting scolded by their professor or something like that, you know. It's a little, little bit. So this is the emote project, uh, to go more specifically. So this is what we're doing right now and, you know, we're proposing collaborations uh, now. So this one, I made 20 uh, short films. It's online. Uh, you can find it at vimeopro.com, uh, M. Chavez Emote Portfolio. And, uh, This is a little short excerpt, a melancholic. So, uh, uh, you know, that kind of uh, stuff, very abstract. Uh, we, we sat down, uh, you know, uh, our, our, a volunteer who happens to be in the audience, my son back there, and we wired him up with uh, uh, EEG uh, cables and we measured his brain. He's not the only one that's, however, uh, we have the number of students there at uh, NTU also are, are taking part in this research. We have a, a, an engineering department that's uh, doing the EEG uh, tracking, and then a, a psychology department's doing the evaluation. And, uh, uh, and, and so we have a, a nice team of three. We haven't really even funded on this, but you know we have the you know resources from Media Art Nexus. To, and this is very interesting uh, uh, area to, to look at. So. So we're, what the idea is to, to you know create map out all this stuff and have a a, a good idea of of how uh, imagery affects a person and then go in the opposite uh, well uh, and then uh, have the per and rather than the image affecting the person have the person affect the image so that they can generate. Uh, and, and maybe you can see insights into how they're feeling or how they're seeing or how they're, you know, uh, you know more, more like the, uh, the scrying stone, going back to that idea of, you know, staring at something and it generates some magical, you know, uh, effect. That's, that's or some, you know, maybe, maybe mythical. If we add in, you know, uh, objective imagery, we could go into really interesting, interesting areas. I think, so that's that's what you know. I, I'm I'm we're I, we're focusing now, is trying to trying to uh, and, and you know, I use the, the uh, media art platform as a place to kind of just display the work and have fun. And you know, this is a, a part from a piece from the emote uh, project. It, it has a we're using my, my son's uh, music. But this one doesn't have music on it, sorry. And then here's another one that has a, a, a partner that Ina and I have both used, uh, Philip, Philip Tan, uh, his music. So this is showing over there now, uh, probably at this very moment.
it's just uh, GLSL shaders and noise patterns. So uh, here's a peak, a long shot of uh, you can see you know various pieces and how they transform. You know, quite a nice little experimental uh, platform for us. We were able to take this over to uh, uh, the bank gallery in Tokyo, uh, as Ina mentioned earlier, and uh, do this cool, cool collaboration with the fashion designer. So basically, we're trying to animate with AI and uh, uh, build an intelligent animation system, and, uh, you know, something that'll, that that. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's commercial or anything, but I guess you know if you're thinking Singaporean terms, maybe it's scalable. Maybe we could sell something like this. But right now we're just making art and uh, trying to create a library and uh, 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 lexicon for this kind of stuff. This is a picture of the board. These are uh, it's a four four pitch board, so each point is uh, four millimeters apart. And that's it. Thank you. We have time for some questions. Let's hear them. We have time for some questions. I'll pass it on to anyone who's got questions. Anybody? Kelly. Hi. Thank you for sharing your work. It was super inspiring um, to see it all. I wish we got to see the chrysalis film, but um, do uh, you have it? Three chrysalis. Do you have time? Yeah. How long is it? Seven, uh, seven. seven minutes. <laughs> do you want? I can. We can have it in Nano. In Nano Institute. Too. She wants the book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Vesna. <laughs> Let me see if I have it here. I don't have it here. It's online, though. It's an email? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know where it is. Well, if you want to show yeah. yeah, you can. I got it. I, I know where it is. Uh, so, of course, has a question. Sure. I, it was just a quick question about the neurofeedback uh, stuff you did. And I was wondering if you found something interesting about the way that the brain responded to the images or what what happened with that research like where is it well uh, yeah uh, we have we we have uh, what did I say uh, he was a he tracked him and he said yeah the guy's he he's falling asleep and when it's supposed to be you know we did get response and it seemed to correlate to what they thought the music is actually what they 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 that research is ongoing and uh, the most recent uh, uh, Report. They they wanted to take the videos and cut them as as they wish, and I said yeah. And and so, uh, and they also found that uh, I think it was a 40 seconds. It, it takes 40 seconds to get a uh, positive reaction, and any, and any kind of or research says that it's been for. So, you know, when we go back to uh, Singapore, we're going to dive back into that and talk with those people. We've been out of touch. And we've just been, uh, you know, I've been building more, more pieces and trying to get really good c control of uh, the software. But now, you know, we, we, we've left, we left that project in December. Mm -hmm. Actually, those pictures were taken a year ago, right? Yeah. On uh, uh, December, December, a full year and a half ago. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been ongoing, but we haven't had any conclusive results on, on uh, well, I mean, we have, we have, we, because you do get, you know, you do, you can read where a person's at, you know, you get a, but, you know, uh, I, I haven't personally uh, been able to uh, get uh, those, that data and look at it, so I can't tell you exactly where we're at on that, but, you know, it's, it's a big project with other people, so that's where we stand. Okay, I don't see this. It's, it's on top. This is it right here. This is just a three. This is the whole thing. We'll find it? Yeah. Oh, cool. 
one question and then we get to listen. Can you turn off all the lights? Oh, um, I just had a quick question about um, your early works uh, because they were pretty political, especially like the Olympics. Um, one. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, and so I was just curious if you felt like in the any in the recent years have you sort of worked on anything? Oh that has yeah. To do with well, you know those were in and all that. That, that, that was almost accidentally political. I wasn't thinking political at all when I made that. I wasn't yeah. trying to make a statement. I was just exploring personal I things. That God on the building. Well, that's what it is now. I realize. <laughs> I I realize what it was. It's like, oh my God, I yeah. did that. No wonder. But uh, and now, but now, yeah, now my work. I, I we j we were really lucky. We got invited to this. One of my my good friends, who unfortunately is not here, but uh, invited us to uh, meet the curator of the Teotihuacan. Uh, uh, show that's going on now, and they're interested in doing something. And a lot of this work, the Emo project, I'm 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 using uh, weaving patterns and, and things, and that's very. I was reading this book, uh, James Matthews, uh, Aztec philosophy, mm -hmm. and they, he talks a lot about uh, weaving and and how that uh, the intricacies of you know different uh, weaving flows. Permeate in Aztec philosophy, and so yeah. Now my work is is looking uh, more more and more at that. And but I'm not being real. You know, I've never really been overt about that. I'm not like you know, you know, brown power or anything like that. And uh, but it, it's it, it's it's part underlying because uh, it's I don't know. Well, I mean, it's it's really cool stuff. You know, they're finding uh, they're finding that it there's a, uh, a phonetic language. I mean, it's a, a written. Uh, language uh, so down there so it's really interesting what, what's discovering there and I'm interested in doing more work with that so Mangbirinla, Chemalebla, Tani, 
ทุกคนทั้งหมดเห็นเพียงก็เชื่อมาเลยพี่จะว่าคำเชื่อมาเห็นนี่ชิลุเทียนบัตรผู้ชั่วชั่วยังไม่เชื่อชอบกันละรู